Welcome back to 504 Road Trips. Today we enter the state of West Virginia, the 21st state we visited on 504 Road Trips. We're crossing the eastern panhandle of the state, so we'll only be in West Virginia for a short time, but we'll see a number of little communities in one city along the way. This is Berkeley County, the only county we'll pass through in West Virginia. We almost immediately entered the unincorporated community of Ridgeway, named after Charles J. Ridgeway, who was a local merchant. In the community are two entries in the National Register of Historic Places. The James Nathaniel Burwell House, also known as Yellow House Farm, was constructed around 1842. It's a fine example of the federal-style architecture with some elements of Greek Revival design, which was quite uncommon in Berkeley County. Made of brick, the house has an L-shaped layout with five bays on its front side. Its small porch is notable for its columns, which have a Greek Revival style. Inside, there's a central hall with rooms on either side of the staircase and two additional rooms in the back part of the house. In 1991, it was officially recognized and added to the National Register of Historic Places. Later in 1913, the George Schlack House was built. It's a two-and-a-half-story rectangular dwelling designed in the Colonial Revival style. Constructed using concrete block, it features a rock-faced finish. The house is five bays wide and four bays deep topped with a truncated hipped roof adorned with denticulated trim. It received its listing on the National Register of Historic Places in 2008. We enter the community of Bunker Hill. Colonel Morgan Morgan established the earliest permanent settlement in what later became West Virginia in 1726. Although the original cabin was destroyed in the French and Indian War, it was reconstructed by Morgan's relatives before the American Revolutionary War. Tragically, James Morgan, Colonel Morgan's grandson, was killed by Tory sympathizers near the cabin, leading to the area being known as Torytown Creek. Today, the restored cabin serves as a state park and museum commemorating its significance in American history. Payne's Chapel United Methodist Church, founded in 1762 near the Virginia state line, suffered a fire in 1902, but was rebuilt three years later. Several other historic United Methodist churches can be found along US 11, including Bunker Hill, Inwood, and Darksville United Methodist Churches. Bunker Hill Presbyterian Church, constructed in 1854 and rebuilt after the Civil War, is another notable historic site in the area. The Mill Creek Historic District in Bunker Hill encompasses Morgan Park and various structures along Mill Creek, showcasing the town's early industrial center. The Bunker Hill Mill, dating back to 1738 and featuring dual water wheels, is the only operating mill of its kind in the state. Additionally, the town witnessed a small Civil War skirmish in 1861, and Confederate General J. Johnston Pettigrew died here in 1863. Situated between Martinsburg and Winchester, Bunker Hill experienced residential growth from the 1980s onwards due to its location along Interstate 81 and U.S. Highway 11. Monuments honoring Morgan and George Washington can be found in Morgan Park, while the Morgan Chapel and Graveyard pay tribute to both figures less than two miles from the town center.
We enter the unincorporated community and census-designated place of Inwood with a population of 3,426 as of the 2020 census. In the late 1880s, the Strong family established Inwood Park in South Berkeley County, coinciding with the Cumberland Valley Railroad's extension. The Inwood Post Office opened on May 5, 1890, spurring the village's growth. The annual Inwood Fair held at the park from 1892 to 1913 attracted thousands of visitors annually. Inwood's Cumberland Valley Railroad Station boasted a grain elevator, facilitating the transportation of local agricultural products and wood items like bark and railroad ties, making it one of the most profitable stations on the line. Originally named Girard, the town's renaming to Inwood has two theories. Some believe it was named after the park, Inwood Park, while others suggest it was chosen by Jonathan Newton Thatcher, the town's first postmaster, after his cousin from Inwood, California. Gray Silver, a local leader, played a crucial role in organizing a cooperative among orchardists with a focus on apple cultivation. With federal funding and Silver's efforts, an apple growing school was established alongside bringing a commercial apple processing plant to Inwood. The C.H. Musselman Company opened the plant in 1920, exclusively producing applesauce by the late 1920s, marking a significant milestone in Inwood's industrial history. Here we approach a roundabout, and I was in the wrong lane. I didn't realize this until it was too late, so that involved an extra loop around the circle, and I still ended up in the wrong lane. Fortunately, by that time, I was the only car around, and I just jumped into the correct lane while I had the chance. We enter the unincorporated community of Darksville, named for William Dark, a Virginia military officer who had his headquarters in the community. Over time, Darksville has been identified by various names and spellings. In an 1895 atlas, it appeared as Buckletown, later evolving into Buckleston with two L's, Buckleston with one L, Buckleston one word, Buckletown two words, and Buckleston one word, all named after James Buckles, who played a significant role in establishing the town in 1790. Other names like Jamestown and Locke have also been associated with the area. In 1980, Darksville was designated as a historic district and added to the National Register of Historic Places due to its rich historical significance. The town boasts a remarkable collection of historic architecture, with approximately 25 buildings dating back to 1810 or earlier, many of which were originally constructed as log cabins. This architectural legacy showcases the town's early development and provides insights into its pioneer origins. Darksville stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of its founders and the unique history of the region. We conclude today's video at mile 7. Thanks for watching. We've enabled channel memberships, so for as little as $1 a month, you too can help support our channel and get early access to our regular videos as well as the occasional members only video. Click the link in the description to join. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. 
post a comment, subscribe, share and follow us on social media, and join us for our next 504 Road Trip.